Welcome to Draw This. Draw This is a weekly series where I'm going to select a word at random and then draw it in real time so that you, the viewer, can follow along. So I'm going to go to thegamegal.com and there is a word generator for Pictionary games, but it works really well for generating words to draw. And the word that I get here is swarm. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and use an image hose brush because when you're painting repeating objects, it's much easier to just paint a few and then make a brush that spits out those objects in repetition rather than paint a hundred or a thousand different things. So if we're going to make a swarm of flies here, I'm just going to paint nine flies that look different and then I'm going to make a brush that spits out flies randomly. So to accomplish that, what you're going to want is to locate the layout grid palette which is under the window menu and then you have to go down to composition panels and layout grid I mean, what this does is this is going to equally divide your canvas into a grid here so the canvas I have selected is just for demonstration purposes you can use just about any canvas you want I recommend using a dimension of somewhere around 1000 by 1000 or 2000 by 2000 somewhere in that range of pixels, because you don't want your canvas to be too big, otherwise your brushes that you make will be too big as well, and likewise you don't want them to be too small. So for this one, this is 11 by 14 at 72 dpi, it's not very big. And the flies that I'm making aren't gonna be very big, so I kind of have more room than I need here. But anyways, on the layout grid, I have it set to three and three divisions, so I have nine cells that I can work with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by first drawing a sketch. And I'm going to set the composite method to multiply. I'll pick a dark gray color and I'm going to use the detail oils brush just to sketch in some flies here. So these are going to be very, very basic because they're going to be teeny tiny. So I don't want to put a whole lot of detail into them. So basically what I'm going to have is I'm gonna have my master fly here and then I'm gonna make all my other flies look like him. So I'm gonna have an oblong egg shape for the body and then I'm gonna have two big cartoon eyes like this and then I'm going to have a couple of wings and that's it, just those few shapes. I'm gonna sketch in some more, maybe we'll do this one coming from the front because you wanna have some different views so that you don't have the same fly overall. Maybe we'll have this one kind of going down. We'll have one that's looking over to the left. These don't have to be perfect because they're just sketches at this point. We'll have one that's kind of going up and to the side. It's okay if you want to repeat them a little bit. You can only do so many different positions for these flies, so... Something like that. You want them to all be generally about the same size, and you want to try to keep them within the cell as best you can. Otherwise, if they overlap, then you're going to get some problems here. So that will work for the sketch. I'm going to turn the sketch opacity down just a little bit. I'm going to go to the canvas layer and I'm going to make the canvas layer a light gray color. And this is important because we want there to be transparency behind all of these flies. So I'm going to put some gray in here so that we can see what we're painting on top of it. So I'm going to use the paint bucket or I could use the fill command to fill with current color. Now we have this gray and then I'm going to create a layer for each of these flies just to start out. So I'm going to need nine layers. So I'm going to just make nine layers really fast. And it's easier for me because these come out in kind of a reverse order. If I just make layer nine, the first cell here, and then layer one is the last one. I know that might be a little confusing, but it's just so much effort to have to rearrange these layers and they always end up stacking back up in the wrong order anyways. So this ends up being faster, believe it or not. So if this is layer nine for the fly, what we're going to do is we're going to add our ink first on a layer and then we're going to add our color underneath. So I'm going to pick the scratch board tool and I'm going to pick black. For the line width, let's just use a nice even line width. Let's use a line width of three and we'll go ahead and just paint in this fly. So we want to try to keep these lines 
pretty smooth. But they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Because again, it's going to be small. These are going to be kind of cartoony flies. So there's one. Now we want to make sure that we move to the next layer before we start drawing. And I know that seems really obvious, but sometimes when I'm doing this, I get really into it and I forget to do that. And then my stuff ends up on the wrong layer. And you can, if you need to, you can always cut it and paste it onto the right layer, but it's better just to get it right. You'll see I switched to layer seven. Putting in the wings and the body. But see, it's nice to have this sketch first because then it makes your inking a lot easier. Then you know exactly where you're going to go. We have to go to layer six, which is the next cell. Now, I know these are not the world's most detailed flies, but you'll see what I mean. They're going to be very tiny, and there's going to be a lot of them. So from a distance, this is kind of what you would see if you were looking at a fly. You'd pretty much just see the body and the wings and the eyes, and not much else. You'll notice I'm doing undos here and there, because every now and then I get it a little bit sloppy. And I don't want it to look too sloppy. Go to the next layer. Try to just do these faster here. You can see by doing each of these individually, they all kind of have their own character and their own sense of emotion. And the good thing about these brushes is you can set them to do different things when they spit these flies out, so they don't all have to be the same as if we're drawing them here. They can kind of be rotated and sized differently, and it's pretty cool. I'm going to go to layer two, do these lines here. And then we'll go to do the last one. And then we can move on to doing the color. Now, this one I'm kind of positioned poorly here, but that's okay because we can use the layer adjuster to just put it into place. It doesn't have to stay where the sketch is. We'll go ahead and zoom out and we will try to center the rest of these flies. We can turn the sketch layer off now. And we'll just go through with the layer adjuster on each layer and center these up. Again, it's very important to have spacing around all of these because if they start to overlap, it's going to mess up the brush. It won't work right. All right, that's looking good. Now we're going to want to add some color underneath. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a layer underneath each of these layers and then merge them together once the color is filled in. So. I'm going to go below layer 9, add a new layer. This will be the color for the layer above it. And let's just use red to fill it in, a color that we can see. I'm going to use the scratch board tool for that. And I'm just going to fill this in all red. The fly doesn't have to stay red. I'm just using this bright red so that I can see it against the background so that I know that I've filled in behind the line. It's important to fill in behind the line and not to go past it. We will go ahead and color this in. So we'll turn on Preserve Transparency. We'll select white and we'll paint in the wings. Preserve Transparency allows us to not paint outside the red that we just painted in. Select a dark gray for the body. Being careful not to paint over the white. And then for the eyes, we'll use a orange color like this, and we'll go a little more bright. And those are going to be our colors for our fly. So since we're pretty set on that, let's select this layer, which is the ink, 
and the layer underneath, which is the color. I'm going to hold shift to select both of them. And then I'm going to do control E on my keyboard to merge them or collapse them into a single layer. So now it's all together on the same layer. And we're just going to do basically the same thing here. To save time, I'm going to start filling these in with this orange color since that's going to remain there. So I'm going to go to the layer below layer 8, which is this layer here. I know it's getting a little confusing keeping track of layers, but with some practice you'll get used to it. I'm going to turn off Preserve Transparency so that I can paint on the new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill this whole thing in with this orange color. It's easier just to fill it in first, and then you know that it's filled in, and then you can worry about picking the color afterward. It just ends up being faster that way. And turn on Preserve Transparency, sample that white, paint that in, and sample the gray, paint that in. So I'm not going to make you wait while I do all this in real time. I'm going to go into Time Warp here and speed this up and just go ahead and fill all these in and then we'll go back to the rest of this after I'm done with that. Okay, so coming out of Time Warp here, and I have all of these flies finished now. I'm not going to add any more shading to these, but you could if you wanted to. You could add three-dimensional shading. You could make the wings transparent if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and just leave them like this because they're going to be very tiny. So you want to go ahead and save this as your master. And what I mean by your master is this is the original copy that's here in case you need to make changes and sometimes when you're making a brush you have to do this trial and error thing where you make a first draft and then you try painting with it and if it doesn't look right then you go back to your master and you make some changes until you get it looking right so this will be our master I'm going to save it as a PSD but you could also save it as a riff and then after we save it what you're going to do is you're going to hold shift and select the bottom most layer after selecting the top one so that you get the whole group of these and do control G to group them we'll call this swarm we'll turn off preserve transparency and this group is what will get turned into a nozzle so what we will do is we will hide the group we'll create a new layer we'll call this test this will be the layer that we'll paint on we can hide this grid too by unchecking this box since we don't need it We'll highlight the group that we have selected here, and then we'll look in our Nozzle Libraries palette that's found in the Window menu, and Media Library Panels Nozzles. And in this panel, there is a sub dialog if you click on this button. And if you go to Make Nozzle from Group, that will turn, on, turn any group selected into a nozzle. So what it does is it, it creates a composition with the proper placement to make this into a nozzle. You don't really have to do anything other than save it. So just immediately do a save. And you want to save this somewhere where you can find it. I like to keep all of my image hose brushes generally in the same folder, but in this case I'm not going to worry too much about it because this is going to be just a demo thing. So I'm going to call this Swarm Nozzle. Save it as a riff. And then all you need to do is just close this. So I'm going to do Control W. That'll just close that composition. We're back in our master here for the swarm. I'm going to go to the test layer. I'm going to select an image hose brush called Spray Size P Angle W because you have to have one of these selected to paint with your nozzle. I'm going to go back to this sub dialog in the nozzle libraries menu. I'm going to go to Load Nozzle. And I'm going to select that swarm and go to Open. And now it's loaded, so if I paint, you can see I get this swarm. I'll just zoom in so we can see this better. So now my brush is all these little flies. So now I have an instant swarm. If I make my brush smaller, then I get smaller flies. It's like one of those old cartoons. You know, you could have them kind of funneling out so this really beats the heck out of drawing all of these little flies individually now you get this nice swarm gives you the same effect 
Uh, you could put in a nice background if you want. I'll go ahead and just play around with this brush so you can see really how wacky these brushes are. Let's do a, a brush that probably isn't so appropriate for this kind of graphic. You can see I can draw a line of flies, and if I press down lightly, I can get a thin line, and if I press down hard, I get a thick line. I could also click with my mouse if I wanted to just place one fly at a time. Sometimes that's easier. Get something like that. There is linear size P angle D. This will kind of rotate the flies as I paint. So you could even get some really cool effects, like I could make this look like a fern if I wanted to. With the right kind of brush stroke, you'd get some kind of plant effect. These brushes are really cool. So again, that's how you make a swarm. You would probably want to use a small brush and something kind of like this. We'll just have it taper off here at the end. Put in a couple of bigger ones in front. And if we wanted to move this around, we can using the layer adjuster. Now, if you find that you want to make changes to these, what you can do is you can change the color or you can transform them in different ways. So let's say maybe that we put these in a composition and for some reason they don't quite match the background, what you can do is you can go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, and you can make them darker, you can make them lighter, you can change the hue if you don't like the color of their eyes and you want their eyes to be green. So there's a lot of room to change this. You can also go back to your master copy, which we're still in now, and you could change each of these layers if you wanted to. If something wasn't right about it or you noticed that maybe you overpainted, you can go in here and you can find the layer, let's say layer nine. And let's say I wanna be a perfectionist and I don't like this little speck that I have here and I wanna fix that. I can go and I can paint over that spot and then I could collapse the group and go back to the nozzle libraries sub dialogue and go to make nozzle from group and just repeat the same process to export my brush again and then reload it and paint with it. You can also export and import these so if you wanted to give these brushes to someone else or put them on a different computer you can do that too. It's pretty easy. So there you go. That's how you make a swarm using the image hose nozzle feature in Corel Painter X3. I hope you'll join me next Tuesday for another episode of Draw This. If you enjoyed this video take a quick second to like it and share it and please click the subscribe button to get instant access to my latest videos and updates. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.